I'm a partner at um, Freshfields. Uh, I'm a partner in the Environment Products and Regulatory Group. I and my team uh, represent companies uh, and defend them where they are um, attacked for selling a product, whether it be a consumer or an industrial product, uh, that may have caused some harm or damage to people. You know, when I first arrived at Freshfields, um, big city law firm in London, you know, I'm from Ipswich, I'm from a comprehensive, I uh, went to Nottingham University. And I suppose, if I'm honest, I came with one or two preconceptions that I may not be the right sort of person to do well. So I would say the barriers were my own sort of self-efficacy barriers. And so it took me a little while to work out that actually almost all jobs work on a meritocracy basis, that if you can do the job well and you're prepared to give it your maximum effort, then probably you'll get some measure of the rewards that you deserve. My mum's a nurse and um, my dad is, out, well he used to be in the Air Force, um, but then he left to work at British Telecom. Uh, he's a scientist really, rather than a, um, a physicist. Uh, they didn't sort of push me in one direction or another. I have no lawyers in my family, no legal background. Since I've become a lawyer, I think occasionally my mum's quite pleased when she goes downtown and she can say I'm a lawyer, but ultimately I don't think anyone cares. My experiences at school were mixed, I would say. I, I really enjoyed it. I liked going there, having, at, having fun with my friends, just mucking about. I wasn't the most disciplined or well-behaved student in the world. Um, I enjoyed sport. That was my thing that I excelled at. Football, hockey, um, cricket, I, basically any sport with a ball in it. I was absolutely rubbish at every single creative subject. In terms of career, apart once I dismissed the idea of being a footballer for Ipswich, uh, which was dismissed relatively early, uh, I wanted to be a pilot in the Air Force. And in fact, I did leave school in the fifth year to go and be a pilot in the Air Force. In fact, I only just passed the interview because uh, they said to me that I was the person that they had uh, with the least amount of interest, interest that they'd ever seen because literally all I had was sport uh, and then going out with my mates. I found that I was... Um, uh, as uh, put off by the discipline of the Air Force as I was by the force in the aeroplane, which I have to admit I didn't enjoy too much. Uh, so then I came back to the sixth form, started to behave a bit better, got a girlfriend and settled down a little bit and became slightly more uh, disciplined. And then it was really only in the, towards the end of the sixth form I thought about law. I was looking at my A-level subjects. I was doing English, history and chemistry, which is a kind of mixture. And I thought I could do English or American studies history or law. That's kind of what I was toying with. Uh, and I just thought law was a subject that had a bit more options open to it. And I'd be lying if I said that my dad hadn't also mentioned that maybe that was more lucrative than English or history. I really didn't think about being a lawyer until second year university. Even though I'd done law, I just thought law would be a really good degree to, to provide you with quite a broad background to do any number of jobs. I had somehow fixated on being a Marks and Spencer's graduate trainee for no apparent reason that I can discern now. But, you know, and then I got to the second year of university and I started to really like my course. Now I think one of the interesting things of that from my point of view is people think that they have to know what they want to do as early as possible and then drive relentlessly towards it. And actually, you know, it comes to different people at different times and it, it, your working career is a long old time and so you can take a bit of time to work out what it is you want to do. I, I guess m my progression through this firm and in my job has not always been totally smooth. When I first arrived back here and qualified I um, into litigation, I had just completed a secondment in Hong Kong, which I really enjoyed. It was just great fun. It's a great city and it was a small office and I'd really enjoyed a lot of responsibility. Came back to this really large office. There's a, there's a thousand people in this office here in London. And in a way I didn't quite commit to it and I thought to myself, well, I'm probably only going to be here two or three years. I hadn't really thought it through. And I probably didn't give off the impression of someone who was totally focused and trying. And I kind of drifted along for a couple of years. And then, really by coincidence, I got put on this case. Uh, and it was a very interesting case. I really sort of threw myself into it. And from then on, it became a bit sort of self-fulfilling because the more I threw myself into it, the more I enjoyed it, the better I tended to perform if I enjoyed it. I think that's just natural. And then people notice that and then they give you better work, which you then 
enjoy more, and it sort of goes on like that. The lifestyle and the work-life balance is a particularly peculiar thing to the individual. So if I'm happy with that, and my life is set up in a way that the people around me are happy with that, it's a trade-off in terms of trying to make sure that you have a nice time, a good, interesting uh, job, and at the same time that you must allow yourself enough time to fill the other parts of your life, because work of itself cannot provide all the fulfillment you need.